Again, Joe Bishop here with a uh, Bishop Backwood Survival. Uh, I got asked after I posted my uh, video on how to get water from vines, and it was just one of them things I happened to do that day. Uh, had people ask me what kind of vine. Uh, the vine I'm getting water from will be this one right here, which is a wild muscadine grapevine. Uh, how you identify it? I don't know. I've lived in the woods all my life, and I just, I know. I know what it looks like. Uh, kind of trial and error. If you look at it, it's kind of got a, like a rough kind of bark on it. Kind of rough bark. Uh, and what you want to do is you can cut one end of it, and you'll get a little bit of water out of it. But what you want to do is cut both ends of it, because that way it gets, it's kind of like having a straw. You suck up like soda in a straw, and you hold the top of it. And a little bit may drip out of it, but when you let go of it and the air gets to rush through it, that's pretty much what this vine does. So what you're going to want to do is you want to cut it, and we'll, we're not going to cut it right off at the ground because grapevines are a pretty hardy bush. It'll keep growing. It'll sprout back up. It'll grow back up. You know, this grapevine right here is probably, I don't know, probably 60, 70 feet tall, not counting all the twists and stuff it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty two-hand machete. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it right about there. I think you can see it on the camera. And I'm going to reach up here. And I'm going to cut it just about as high as I can get. And that falls down. And what you do, you hold this thing up. And you can see, you can already see the water dripping out of it, right? Turn it sideways, kind of bend it back up on itself, like that there, and it can't leak out, okay? Kind of like a straw, you know? You sit there and you want more water, you turn it back up. Bigger the vine, the more water you're going to have in it, all right? I'm right in, the, I'm, I'm right in a flood zone here. Uh, which is actually kind of dry right now. We hunt a lot of frogs through this area and uh, I'm actually kind of scoping it out for uh, maybe a frog hunt this weekend. But uh, what I'm saying is uh, I'm going to have to push farther back. Probably there's a nice hole back in the back there. I'm probably going to have to push back there. The closer you get to that water, the more the vines are going to have the water in it. So this is, like I said, a muscadine, wild muscadine grapevine. All right, you can see the see the bark on it. All right, uh, there's other vines you can drink from. It's kind of like trial and error. You just don't want to do one that had a uh, we ain't got Carrari here, but you don't want to drink out of a Carrari vine. Uh, but uh, safe to say, if it's clear and don't have a, a odor to it, other than like a maybe a woody odor. It's okay to drink from. But if you drink from one and you end up dying, you ain't blaming on Joe Bishop. Because I do this on my at my own risk. You know, uh, you still see this vine dripping water. And that's pretty good bit coming out of it. You know, if you had a container, which I could go around, I'm sure I can find a can or a bottle or something around here in this area. I could sit there and catch all that water coming out of it. Uh, make sure the uh, the vine don't have any kind of sappy, like white sap or anything like that coming out of it. Uh, if it does, don't drink it. You know, if you feel like you you don't trust uh, trust the vine, like I say, stay on the safe side. You know, uh, in Florida, I can tell you right now, if you die of thirst or starvation in Florida. It's because you don't know what you're doing. There's all kinds of stuff to eat out here. Uh, you can see the area that I'm in. It's real pretty. 
what I call the pretty woods. There's a lot of bugs out here. Uh, yellow flies, horse flies, uh, mosquitoes, all that good stuff. But I wouldn't want to be in any, any other place. I love it out here. Uh, like I say, I got my two hand mache, got my slingshot in my pocket. Uh, my other pocket got marbles. You know, you spend all day out here. Hey, look at that. Trusty slingshot. Um, you can see these, you see this grapevine here? Yeah, it comes down. The thing you really don't want to do is like cut it off right there at the bottom. You cut it off at the bottom, it's going to take a while for it to grow back. This is actually a leaf off of a grapevine. You see it? Alright. If you're interested in it, start learning your uh, wildlife and stuff and your your plants. And main thing I don't mess with, with, I don't mess with mushrooms. I have no reason to mess with mushrooms. You ain't getting no nutritional value out of a mushroom. Uh, I always wanted to go morel hunting, but we don't have morels down here in Florida. If they do, I've never seen them. Not saying I've seen everything here in Florida, but I've never seen a morel down here. Uh, we have other kind of mushrooms, but like I said, you get no nutritional value from a mushroom. And uh, why take the chance, right? Unless you know exactly what you're doing. Why take the chance? I also want to show you this. You see where the ground gets higher? This is old railroad track from the uh, 1920s that they pulled up. That goes into uh, CDC, Florida. That's a pretty cool place. You know, this, this thing runs all the way from uh, uh, Cedar Key, which is in the line for it, all the way into, up into Jacksonville. But uh, like I said, all the uh, beds have been pulled up. All the tracks have been pulled up. Uh, pretty cool place. So as you can see, these are some of the timbers from it. They built with what they had. See some old timbers down here. Pretty cool. Well, that's my rambling for today. Y'all have a good day. Joe Bishop with Backwood Survival. Bishop Backwood Survival.